Hi everyone, uh, welcome to today's GCSE math session. Um, apologies for starting a bit late, just had a couple of uh, technical glitches but should be all solved in a couple of minutes. Um, so today's session is percentages part two. So I'm sure lots of you will have joined us for yesterday's session which was percentages part one um, led by our tutor Molly and this is part two. So going through some different types of questions and some harder stuff today. Um, so should be a really good session. Um, if you didn't join us for yesterday's session on percentages part one but want to have a catch up on that after this session, um, that is up on the My Tutor YouTube channel. So um, you can have a watch back of that um, for part one so you can cover all things percentages. Um, so today's session is run um, as usual by Molly. Um, Molly is one of our top tutors um, and she's done over 150 lessons with us. And just a bit about her, she um, studies computer science and mathematics at the University of Bath. Um, so um, today's session will be one hour as usual. So it'll finish at just quarter past um, one. And as usual, just pop any questions you have for Molly um, about what she's going through. Or for me, I'm Tilly, I work at my tutor. So you can ask me any questions about how the my tutor online school works or any other sessions. Um, that we have running and you can put those in the chat box or the Q&A box um, and just one little thing because there's been a few questions about this over the past few math sessions um, there's a feature in this um, sort of webinar space which is um, to raise hand um, for these webinars it's not really particularly useful um, just because you guys don't have the ability to um, sort of speak out loud so if you want to um, ask a question just pop it in the chat and if anyone, um, if we like miss any of those questions, then we'll make sure to go back to those at the end. because We'll have some time for questions at the end. Um, Molly, are you all um, okay with the lesson space? Yes, should be. Um, Brilliant. Um, and just a reminder, we have lots of other subjects um, on the online school um, happening every day and we'll hopefully be adding some new subjects as well next week so watch this space for that. Um, what we've got coming up today as well is um, physics at 2pm that's on sound and ultrasound and GCSE biology at 3.15 and that's on transport systems so if you want to join us for some um, science tutorials then please do later today you can find the links to those on site. Um, Brilliant. Molly, if you're all ready to go, then we can kick yep. off. Cool. Hi, everybody. I'm Molly, as you've probably heard a million times when you've come to these. Um, so today we'll be going over <coughs> percentages part two. So if you came yesterday, um, we looked at calculating percentages. So um, say 28% of 360. Um, and we looked at doing kind of the reverse of that. So working out what percentage something is of something else. Uh, we also then started to have a look um, at percentage increase and decrease. We focused yesterday especially on some really difficult ones with um, kind of percentages more than 100. Uh, so if you didn't catch that yesterday, uh, might be a good one to go and review. Um, so today we're going to be looking at kind of the higher level stuff. Um, we're going to do a quick recap on percentage increase and decrease. Um, and then we're going to look at reverse percentages. Um, and compound interest um, yeah and also a little bit of um, combining percentages I'll explain that when it comes to it uh, so like Tilly said just whack any messages in the chat um, and I'll answer them as we go along if I can or if not at the end so uh, we'll start by having a look at some um, percentage change questions uh, let's have a look So I'm going to kind of work on the basis that people remember the method from yesterday. If you don't remember or you weren't here, pop a message on the chat and I'll go through it. Um, so if we remember, there are two ways that we can tackle questions like this. Um, so I'm going to be thinking mostly about that second method, just because it helps us when we then come to doing reverse percentages. So um, Alice buys a book for £19.80. A year later, she sells the book for £12.87. And we want to calculate the percentage decrease in the value of the book. There are two ways to do it, um, and I'll quickly go through both of them again. 
but not in too much detail, because as I said, that's in yesterday's lesson. So this kind of method A, as I was calling it, um, we're going to look at what the actual drop in value has been. So to drop from £19.80 to £12.87, um, we're looking at how, how much has that actually dropped. And that will be, I think, £6.93. So we take that £6.93 and we work out what that is as a percentage of the original amount. And to find that as a percentage, we do it as a fraction. So that percentage drop, sorry, that um, cost drop uh, divided by the original cost and times it by 100. And if you pop that into your calculator, I've actually got a calculator up today so that, because especially if compound interest will need it. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. So um, 693 divided by 1980 times 100. And we go, that's a 35% decrease. Yeah, perfect. Loads of people got that. Well done. Um, the second method is one where we think more about our multiplier method. So um, this comes from um, thinking about the reverse. So when we're doing, say, say we had um, Alice buys a book for £19.80. A year later, she sells it at a 35% decrease. And we're thinking about how we would work that out. So what we would do there is think about our multiplier. So we take um, uh, £19.80. Um, we're going to multiply it by some multiplier, which we're going to call x. And that gives us out £12.87. Please do shout if you don't understand what I mean by this multiplier. I can go through that again. Um, and I'll go through it again more when we do reverse percentages, which will be in a few minutes or so. So then how do we find this x? Well, we do 1287 divided by 1980. And we can see that that's going to give us, so 1287 divided by 1980, 0.65. And we know from our knowledge of multipliers that this directly translates to a decrease of 35%. So if anybody doesn't get that, please, please do shout. Um, and I can explain it more for the next question. Um, Okay, someone said please slow down. I'll do the next one slower. Uh, we'll just have a look at one more of these and then jump straight into reverse percentages. Um, I'll try to find one here that's an increase. So let's have a look at this one. Um, so the volume of juice in a can uh, is increased from... Okay, yeah, people aren't getting it. I'll explain it this time. Um, um, the volume of juice in a can is increased from 250 mils to 330 mils, and we want to work out the percentage increase. So a quick note before this, um, I'm just going to talk very briefly um, about multipliers and what I mean by all of this. So um, our multiplier is um, the kind of magic thing that we use to translate our percentage increase um, or decrease into... Um, a, uh, a decimal basically. So for example, um, let's say we, let's just choose a number 125. Um, and let's say we want to um, decrease that by 30%. The first thing that we do is we think about our multiplier for 30. Now these are just the number divided by 100. So 30 is 0.3. If we add 3%, it would be 0.03. 65% is 0.65 and so on. And because it's a decrease, we're taking that away from 100%, which is one. So our multiplier for a negative, uh, like a decrease in 30% is 0.7 because we're taking it away from one. There are a couple of ways that you can think about this um, to try to uh, uh, kind of get your head around it. So you can either think of it as if we take 30% away from something, we're left with 70% of that thing. If you have a cake, those of you who were here yesterday, um, and probably at other ones know I like the example of cake, um, probably a bad idea at a lunchtime lesson, but oh well. So if you have a cake um, and you take away 30% of it, you're left with 70%. And this 0 0.7 is our multiplier for 70%. So a 30% decrease in something is the same as 70% of that thing. 
hopefully that makes sense. So if we had, for example, um, a decrease in 45%, we would use the multiplier 0.55. If we had a decrease in 12%, we would use the multiplier 0.88. Just take a moment to think about those if you need to. Now, similarly, um, if we have a percentage increase, let's say we increase by 40%, right? Now, like with decrease, we subtracted it from one, right? Because it was a decrease. This time, we're going to add it to one. And the reason for that is you're kind of, you're finding 40% of it and you're adding it to the thing itself, right? So if we want to find a 40% increase of 125, we're finding 40% of 125 and adding it to 125. So what this method does is it skips that adding step. So if we make our multiplier 1.4, so our multiplier for 40% is 0 0.4 and we've added it to 1, we're taking the 40% and adding it all in one go. So this is a really, really useful method. It will be super useful um, for compound interest um, and really useful for reverse percentages as well. Really useful. Um, so do keep shouting if you're not understanding. Um, hopefully we'll do enough questions that even if you don't get it now, you'll get it through practice. Um, but just give you another couple of examples. Um, an increase of 25% would be 1.25. Hopefully you're starting to get the idea here of how we calculate these multipliers. So let's go to this question. Uh, get rid of that other side. So uh, the volume of juice in a can is increased from 100, uh, sorry, 250 mils to 330 mils. Um, I'm going to do it just using method B. Um, so what we've done to get there is we've taken 250 mils um, and we have um, multiplied it by some sort of multiplier, one point something to make it 330, right? That's the process that we would do. If it was said the volume of juice in a can is 250 moles and it's increased by something percent. <clears throat> you would do it, you would multiply it by one point, that something, um, and it would become 330. So we want to know what on earth this thing is. So 250 times our multiplier is equal to 330. So now all we need to do is a tiny bit of rearranging, just dividing by 250. Oh, sorry. Just dividing by 250. And we'll find out what our multiplier is. So it's going to be, uh, let's see, 330 divided by 250, 1.32. So 1.32, uh, what do you think the percentage increase is from that? Yeah, some people are putting it brilliant. It's 32%. And that's because 1.32, we know that we would make that by 32% and doing it as an increase. If this had been 0 0.68, that indicates a 32% decrease, because that's our multiplier for 32 taken away. Um, it Method A is normally easier. Um, the reason that I'm doing this way um, is to it, make you comfortable with multipliers. I'll do it using method A as well just to kind of make you comfortable with that. But you'll see when we do reverse percentages that, um, and um, compound interest actually that we need multipliers. So if you don't understand them now, um, you should get in the more examples that we do. So method A for this, um, we take the um, difference, how much we've actually increased it by. Well, to get from 250 mils to 330 mils, we've increased it by 80 mils, right? So we take our 80 and we work out 80 as a percentage of 250, our original number. So to do that, we divide it by it and multiply it by 100. That's our method for finding 80 as a percentage of 250. And when we do this, let's see what we get. 80 divided by 250 times 100, 32. Same. So this method um, is probably a bit more intuitive method day. Um, yeah so hopefully that makes a bit of sense um, and if it doesn't like I said don't worry um, it's just to introduce you to the concept of multipliers 
um, which I can show you actually in a slightly different way. So I have a quick go now before we jump into reverse percentages. So um, I'll just do a couple of really kind of basic examples. So for example, uh, 150 is increased by 14%. What's the new number? So all we need to do here is work out what the multiplier is for an increase of 14%. So what do you think the multiplier is? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. It's going to be 1.14 because it's an increase, so we're adding it to one. So our multiplier is 1.14 and it's a multiplier, so we multiply it by the thing that's being increased. So let's do that. 1.14 times 150, you get 171. The longer way that you could do that is work out 14% which you would do by multiplying it by 0.14. Then you're adding it to one of itself. So it's the same thing as multiplying it by 1.14. So in this way, um, you're doing it in a much kind of nicer way. Let's have a look at another one. What if we have 270 is decreased by 3.5%. This is a bit of a trickier one. What do you think the multiplier is going to be here? Yeah, a couple of people have got it. Yeah, okay. So the multiplier for just 3.5, I'll write it in grey. Now this is tricky. It's not 0 0.35, it's 0 0.035. And that's because 0 0.35 is 35%. This is 10 times smaller. And then we're subtracting that from 1 to get our actual multiplier that we're going to use, which a few of you got, which is brilliant. And that is um, 0 0.965. Right? All I've done there is 1 minus this. And that's because it's a decrease. So we do that number, our multiplier, multiplied by the thing that's actually being decreased. And let's see what we get. 0 0.965 times 270, we get 260.55. Yeah, brilliant. Um, do people want more examples of this? Or do you want me to move on to reverse percentages? <laughs> move on. Okay, cool. Um, and if there is anybody who did want more um, examples, you should hopefully kind of get them um, through reverse percentages. So that's what we'll have a look at now. So reverse percentages is something like this. A really classic uh, kind of maths question, right? So um, in a sale, normal prices are reduced by 20%. Um, Andrew bought a saddle for his horse in the sale. The sale price was £220, and we want to calculate the normal price of the saddle. So we can actually do this really quickly um, and in quite an intuitive way using the multiplier thing that we just did. So let's think about what we're actually doing, right? What we're trying to find out. So what I would always start by doing is calling what we're trying to find x. So let's call our normal price x. Now what we're saying has happened is that we've taken x we decreased it by 20% and we get 220. So we can, we can do this. We can say, well, here's our sale price X. Sorry, not our sale price, our normal price X. We're timesing it by the multiplier for a decrease of 20%. And hopefully you'll be able to work out that that's going to be 0 0.8. Right? Because it's a decrease. So it's less than one. And we know that that, our decrease in 20% generates £220. Hopefully people understand how I formed that, that equation. Somebody um, said something which I'm actually quite glad um, you said, which was um, increase this by 20%, which you can't quite do because... Um, hmm, I don't know how to explain it without um, making it too complicated. 
say we take um, 100 and we decrease it by 50%, we get 50. Well, then you would think if we do the reverse, if we increase 50 by 50%, we get 100. But we don't, we get 75. So hopefully you can see that that's not quite the same thing. That's not yeah, exactly what we can do. So then what we do here, hopefully you understand how we got this equation. We just see now that x is equal to 220 divided by 0 0.8. And then all we have to do is work this out. 220 divided by 0 0.8, 275. And that's our answer. And now you can test it and work out 20% off 275 and check that you get 220. But yeah, well done. A lot of people got that. So good job. Um, and hopefully you can see that using this method, we've literally done two lines of working um, and managed to get the answer. So let's have a look uh, at this one. Okay. Um, Jacob answered 80% of the questions in a test correctly. And he answered 32% of the questions. Now this is a different type of question. Um, work out the total number of questions in the test. So what we're doing here, again, we, we've got to think about, about what we're doing. What we're saying is that, um, I suppose it's the same method, but it's a different way of thinking about it. If we call the total number of questions x, our favourite thing to call something, <laughs> we call this x. What we're saying is that 80% of those questions um, is 32. So 80% of x. Now that's not an 80% increase, it's not an 80% decrease. We're just saying that 80% of x is 32. And our multiplier for 80% of something is just that straight 0 0.8. So we're saying that 0 0.8 times x, 80% of the total number of questions, is 32. And that means that x is equal to 32 divided by 0 0.8. Right? I'm just doing a little bit of rearranging. I'm just dividing both sides by 0 0.8. So that means that I get. 32 divided by 0 0.8, 40. Hopefully people can see how I did that. It's just about working backwards and thinking, okay, what did I do to this number um, to get out the answer? Yeah, brilliant. Perfect, loads of people getting that. Just shout if it's not making sense. I can try to explain it a bit better. <clears throat> Let's do another one. I think the best way to do this is just loads and loads of questions um, because then you get used to calculating um, multipliers as well. So um, in a sale, normal prices are reduced by 15%. So that should immediately get you thinking in your head, what's the multiplier for a reduction of 15%? The sale price of the CD player is £102 and we want to work out the normal price. So hopefully by the end of this, you'll see questions like this and think, yes, this is something that I can do. So the normal price is x. It's the same as we've done before. We call the normal price x. What did we do to it? We reduced it by 15%. So the multiplier for that, hopefully you've managed to get this by now, 0 0.85. Because we're taking our 0 0.15, our multiplier for that, from 1, because it's a reduction. We multiply that by, the, by, um, ooh, sorry, by x. So we take our normal price x. We um, multiply it by our multiplier for a reduction of 15%, and we get 102, the sale price. So now we just want to know what x was. What is that normal price? Well, it's going to be 102 divided by 0 0.85. So I'm just dividing by 0 0.85 on both sides. Let's see what we get. 102 divided by 0 0.85, 120. So our normal price of the CD player is £120. Yeah, loads of people were getting that. Well done. Okay, um, just shout again if you're not getting it. But I think everybody is at this point, which is really, really good. I'm just going to do one more like this, um, and then we'll move on to compound. And at the end, we'll come back and do some really hard questions. Uh, so let's have a look at this one. 
just wanted to find one with, with an increase this time. So now you have this. <clears throat> the price of all rail season tickets to London increased by 4%. And the price of a rail season ticket from Cambridge to London increased by £121.60. Work out the price before this increase. So this is a different type of question again. So let's think about what this means. Um, we've got our original price of the rail season ticket and it increased by 4%. And that meant an increase of £121.60. So that means that we can equate these two. I'll show you what I mean. Even though this is an increase of 4%, we're actually just thinking about the 4% because we have, let's, let's try to do it in a diagram. Here's the original price. We pop up 4% and we get a slightly larger new price. Now that new price we know is 121 Oh, sorry, no, it's not. And <laughs> not that new price. This increase, this hop up, was the same thing as £121.60. Just that little hop. So, what we can say is that 4% is the same as £121.60. So, we can say that 4% um, of the original price, again, let's call it X. We love doing that. 4% of X, remember we're not doing an increase this time, we're just thinking about what that actual increase is, what the actual hop is. So we're just going to do a multiply for 4%, which is 0 0.04, multiply that by the original price, and that is the same, 4% is the same as £121.60. So then we just, we've set up an equation, we're just going to do a little bit of rearranging and say that X is therefore equal to £121.60 divided by 0.04. I've just divided by 0.04 on both sides. So let's see what this gives me. I do £121.60 divided by 0.04. And that gives me 3,040. And hopefully you can see where I got all of that from. <laughs> Someone said, isn't that a bit expensive? Yeah. That's, that's trains. <laughs> um, why is it 0 0.04? Um, because uh, we're just looking for the little increase. You know how I said that when you calculate, in fact, let, let me show you. So this, this ticket, right, um, increased by 4%. Let's, let's see what that is. If we're doing an increase, remember, we um, multiply it by 1.04. So let's have a look at that. We're increasing it by 4%. This is what we're used to doing, just applying our multiplier. Let's see what that gives us. So we take our 3,040 and we're going to increase it by 4%. We get 3,161. Uh, is that right? Is that what that said? 3,161 pounds 60. Now look at this. That is an increase of £121.60. And that's all it's saying, that just that 0.04 bit is equal to £121.60. The reason that we do 1.04 is because we're adding it on to the original price, but all we cared about was the actual bit that was being added on. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, it's kind of like, I guess this is what I picture in my head. If, if we imagine the original price is a bar like this, and this is what we're adding on, this whole thing is 1.04. This little bit here is just our 0 0.04. And that's the bit that was equal to £121.60. Brilliant. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, does anybody want me to go over any more um, reverse percentages or do you want me to move on to the next thing? Okay. I think the consensus is that I'll just do one more because most people are saying yes or one more. Some people are saying move on. So I'll do one more, but I'll do it a little bit quicker so that we're not kind of dragging. Um, okay, in fact, let's, uh, let's have a look at part B of this. So 
um, after the increase. So remember that this is an increase in all tickets of four uh, percent. Uh, after the increase, the price of a raise of a race and a rail season ticket, raise and ticket, amazing, from Brighton to London was two thousand eight hundred and twenty-eight pounds eighty. Work out the price before this increase. And this is more like one that we're familiar with. Um, what we've been doing. So we'll call the price beforehand X. And when we take X and apply a 4% increase, we get £2,828.80. That's all this kind of equation means. You can read it as a sentence. The price increased by 4% is equal to this number. And then all we do is take our X and make it the subject, which is divide by 1.04 on both sides. So take this and divide it by 1.04 and let's see what we get then. So this is uh, 2828 times 80 divided by 1.04. It's 2720. And I know I went over that one a bit quicker, but I want to make sure that I, I get through everything. So hopefully that makes sense to those who wanted one more. Um, Again, you have plenty of opportunity to ask questions. There's 15 minutes at the end for me answering questions. So if you're stuck on this particular thing, I can come back to this, no worries. Okay, um, I'm just going to do um, one quick question on um, applying multiple percentages, um, and then I'm going to do compound interest. So, um, yeah, I think I'll just do one question. I, I might do more. Um, they're not as common. That's why I don't want to focus on it too much. Um, but we could get a question, uh, I'm going to have to come up with one now, um, something like this. So, um, uh, uh, a shop has a 20% sale. Uh, Sarah also has um, a 30% discount card. Um, what is her total percentage saving? So these aren't as common, but it's still a really good one to go over because they can be quite tricky. So what we're saying is if you apply a 20% decrease and then a 30% decrease, what's the total decrease? Now, you might be inclined to say 50% decrease, but that's not quite right because you can't just add, because then if we decrease something by 50% and then 50% again, it won't be zero. So it's a really weird one to think about. It's not quite um, as intuitive as you think. So we can think about a really nice way of doing this. Um, let's think about <coughs> um, uh, what we would apply. So I'm just going to, I'm not even going to use an algebraic letter for this because we don't really need to think about the algebra specifically. But let's say um, she buys some things, right? So I'm just going to draw like a little shopping bag. That's my, <laughs> that's my kind of um, number. So whatever price her shopping is. And then let's do the it doesn't matter which way around you apply them by the way that's the really interesting thing because it's all multiplication let's apply the 20 percent sale that's a multiplier of 0 0.8 and then let's apply the 30 percent discount card that's a multiplier of 0 0.7 right so this is a 20 percent decrease and a 30 percent decrease and this is the same as her shopping times well let's work it out 0 0.8 times 0 0.7 equals 0 0.56. And what does this translate to? This translates to um, a 44% decrease. Does that one make sense? Do people want me to go over another one like that? Or shall I move on to compound interest? Yeah, okay. Again, I'll just go through one more because some people are saying yes, some people are saying it makes sense. Yeah, okay, most people are saying one more, so I'll do one more. But yeah, I just think that's really interesting. It, it's totally not what you think. If you get 20% off and then 30% off, that's the same thing as 44% off. And it just seems like, I don't know, it seems to me like such a random number. I think that these questions are really interesting. Maybe that's just because I'm a nerd, but, you know. Um, <laughs> So let's do another one. Let's say um, uh, a theme park increases uh, its ticket prices by 5%. Uh, it 
then increases them a further um, 15%. What is the total increase? So they've made them 5% more expensive and then on top of that, 15% more expensive. So let's think about what we're doing. Again, you can call it like X, but I think that's kind of a bit off-putting. As soon as you throw X into something, it's a bit scarier than it needs to be. All we're just thinking about, you don't even have to write this, but it kind of helps you think. So let's say we, we've got a, a ticket um, and a 5% increase. That's 1.05, right? That's our 5% and it's increased, so it's added to 1. And then a 15% increase, that's 1.15. That's our multiplier for a 15% increase. So what's this the same as? It's the same as our ticket price times, let's have a look, 1.05 times 1.15 is 1.2075, which we know translates to an increase of 20.75%. That's what our multiplier is for an increase of 20.75. Yeah, brilliant. People are getting that, which is fantastic. Well done. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, if you want me to come back for it at the end, just whack a message in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll come back to it. But for now, because I've technically got five minutes until I take questions, um, I'll cover compound interest. Um, and hopefully I can get through <laughs> as much as I want to. Uh, let's go through some of these. So, what compound interest means, um, it's, it's almost always used in, um, in terms of a bank. So if you have any money in a bank, you'll know that you get um, an interest rate. And that basically means that they kind of pay you um, to keep your money there in the bank. So maybe you get 0.5%. Oh, this is simple interest. I don't want simple interest. <laughs> simple interest means that it's um, an amount, um, a percentage of the first amount. So say you pay, you put in £100 and you get 1% interest per year. That means that you would get one pound per year because one percent of your original amount is one pound so they're just paying you a pound a year that's not how it works though that's in in some fantasy world um in the real world it's compound interest which means that they pay you one percent of what is in your bank so one percent of 100 takes you to 101 then they pay you one percent of 101 pounds which is one pound and one penny and so on so it increases like that so that's why we um would use compound interest. Okay, yeah, so here, this is the other way around, where if you take out a loan, you owe them interest. So if, you, if I lent you £100 um, and charged you 10% in interest, it would mean that you would have to pay me back £110. So here's how we're going to do it. Let's think about this. So take out a loan of £800, and the bank charges us 15% compound interest per year. So if you don't pay off any of the loan in four years, how much would you owe the bank? So let's think about how we're going to do this. We take out 800 pounds. Um, right, after one year, that's a 15% increase. 1.15, our multiplier for 1.15. After two years, we take that and increase it by 15% again. And then we take that and we increase it by 15% again. And then finally, in the fourth year, we increase it by 15% again. Now, if you look at what we've done, we've actually taken 800 and we've done 1.15 times itself four times. So that's our 15% interest to the power of four. And that number is how many years? If we took out this loan for 20 years, it would be to the power of 20. So that's where this. Um, to the power of comes from. And we're going to use this in all the compound interest questions. I'll only go through one more after this before I take questions, because um, I think it's slightly simpler, but have a look. So then we just pop this into our calculator, and this is why I needed um, to get this scientific one up. So we do 1.15 to the power of 4, and times that by our um, 800. So if we didn't pay them out, and this is why loan companies are horrible, life lesson as well, we would have to pay back almost £1,400. 
Um, and whenever you have questions involving money, you round it to two decimal places. So this is going to be £1,399.21. Um, £1,399.21. So, um, yeah, a horrible amount, basically. Um, and hopefully that makes sense. I'll just do one more and then I'll take questions. So let's have another look. Um, uh, okay, let's do this one because it's quite a difficult one. A couple of steps involved in this one. So you invest £4,000 in a fund which earns 11% compound return per year. That's an insane amount of return. That would, I always used to do these questions in GCC and think, wow, interest is pretty good. No, it would be more like 0 0.011. Um, so which earns, this magic bank, which earns you 11% return per year. So how much would the fund be worth after 10 years, given that you removed half of the balance uh, after five years? So we're gonna have to do two steps to this. I don't think there's any way around it. So we'll start off by thinking about that first five years to work out how much we're going to have removed. So we take our 4,000 and it's at an interest rate of 11%. So that's 1.11. Um, and that's for five years because we're just doing this first five years. Uh, and let's see what that gives us. So uh, 1.11 to the power of five times that by 4,000. So we've got £6,740.23. £6,740.23. And then we remove half of it. We've taken half of it out. So what's left in the bank? £3,370.12. And we invest that for another five years at the same interest rate. So we invest that for another five years. And now we're going to see what this gives us. So we do our 1.11, oops, sorry. Oh my gosh. 1.11 to the power of five and times that by 3,370 pounds 12. And we're going to get this. 5,678 pounds 85. 85. Now you could put this all into your calculator on one, in one go. You could put in, uh, be quick so that we have time for questions, but you could put in uh, our first five years um, and then we halved that and stored it for another five years and that would give you the same thing. We're just not working it out in the middle, um, but that's obviously a bit confusing. So you do whichever you want. If you're a fan of whacking everything into your calculator at once, um, go for it. So hopefully that will make sense, that is a bit. Um, for money, yes, it will always be to two decimal places because that's how like pence works, basically. So yeah, brilliant, cool. Um, and now I'll take questions for 15 minutes. Well, not too many questions today. I um, just had one in that said, um, in the question before the last, two questions if that makes sense um yes. how did you turn it into 44 percent and someone else was asking about that question as well so okay we sure uh yes this one cool um so hopefully you understand how i got to 0 0.56 so this is because um we've done our 20 percent decrease is our multiplier of 0 0.8 and our 30 percent decrease is our multiplier of 0 0.7 so combining those, we get a multiplier of 0 0.56. Um, and what this equates to um, is a 44% decrease. And that's because if we had um, 0 0.44, that's our multiplier for 44, right? And we were taking it away from 1, we'd end up with 0 0.56. Basically, it's just like making it up to 1 and seeing what that is. Hopefully, if you do enough multiplier questions, you'll be able to work out what these are and you'll kind of be able to look at that and see um, what that means. Cool and I think in reference to the last question, um, why do you need to put brackets for the top half of the fraction? 
Um, oh, I mean, you technically don't because it's all multiplied. Um, that's a good question, actually. The only reason that I did was um, to set it out better in my brain, kind of thinking this is after five years and then we divide it by two. But you don't have to in terms of putting it into a calculator. Nice. Um, a few people asking for a few different, if you could go over a, a few different types of um, percentages question. I think the most popular one um, looks like, could you go over reverse percentages one more time? Yes, sure. Um, I'll go over another couple of those. That's why I kept this tab open. <laughs> um, so I'll go over a, a couple more um, of these because I know that this is probably the most confusing one. Um, oh, I mean, I say that and then the most of I've done most of them, so I might have to find some more. Oh, although I did have a document, actually. Um, that's a compound interest one. That's like, hopefully got some quite tricky questions on it. Let me have a look. That's compound interest. So there's some combined compound interest ones here. So let me know if you want me to um, go over that. Uh, hmm. no, these aren't great. I'll just do this one. This is more kind of a wordy question. So, oh my, oh my gosh, how do you pronounce that name? Jothi? Jothi? Who knows? He bought a car. Uh, a later, he sold the car for £2,125. And that was a loss of 15%. So, we will need to work out the original price of the car. And I think questions like this are sometimes worded a bit weirdly, and, and it might not be immediately obvious to realize that all this is saying is that something was reduced by 15%. That's, that's all it is, a loss of 15%. So we'll call the original price of the car, let's call it C. Let's go a little wild, let's not call it X, right? So we'll call the original price of the car C. So we take that original price and he made a loss of 15%. So we made 15% less than what he bought it for. So the multiplier for a 15% reduction, hopefully, you can work out is 0 0.85. <clears throat> so we've taken the original price of the car, reduced it by 15%, and that resulted in what he sold it for, 2,125. So then we'll work out this original price C by dividing both sides by 0 0.85. Um, and plugging that into our calculator and seeing what we get. So 2,125 divided by 0 0.85, 2,500. So hopefully that makes sense for, yes. Brilliant. Um, there was a, quest a couple of questions. Um, for me, one of them was, will there be French lessons? Um, we're still finalising what subjects um, and sort of levels we're going to be adding. Um, so I can't say yet, but I promise that as soon as we know, um, we'll let you guys know in these tutorials and via email. Um, so thank you for the question. And also, is this lesson viewable later on YouTube? Yes. So I'll be uploading this um, hopefully later this afternoon. Um, latest it will be up and viewable will be tomorrow morning. So you guys can just watch this back and um, go over the questions that Molly's gone through um, as well. Um, Molly, just a couple more questions for you. Um, how many marks would the compound question be? Oh, good question. Um, one like this. Uh, let me see what it says on here. It might give you, there you go, four marks. Um, especially, yeah, that one would definitely be four. They're normally about two, like three marks. This one would be four because you have that bit in the middle. Cool. Um, and there was one about if you could go to the Jacob question. Gosh, uh, let me find it. I remember one of them being having the name Jacob in it. Bear with. Yeah. Uh, there we go. That one. Yeah. So there was a question about I think a, an alternative um, method you could use. It says, could you work out? Uh, 1%, so 32 over 80, and multiply that by 100? Yes. Yes. I'll kind of explain that if people find that easier. Um, so, uh, yeah, okay. So what we're saying is that if 
yeah, okay. So if we're saying that 32 is 80% of the questions, 1% we get by dividing that by 80. So 1% is 32 divided by 80, which will give you, well, let's have a look, 32 divided by 80, 0 0.4. And therefore 100% is gotten by multiplying that by 100, which is 40. So you get exactly the same answer, just a different way of thinking about it. Great, and a couple of questions on um, simple interest. So would we ever have to answer a simple interest question um, is the first one. And secondly, what's the difference between simple interest and compound interest? Okay, sure. So um, simple interest, I'm pretty sure anyway, now I'm doubting myself, um, is just where it's um, it interest from the first one and you apply it again and again. So let's say I have um, 100, 100 pounds in a bank um, and the interest rate is 10%. Then with simple interest, um, we just have um, 10 pounds per year because that first amount, 10% of this is 10 pounds. So after um, one year, we have 110 pounds. After five years, we have 150 pounds. So you might be asked to do it in an exam. It's less likely because it's quite easy. You literally just take the first amount and add it the number of years. Whereas compound interest means it's 10% of what is in there every year. So after one year, it's the same thing. It's 110. Oops. Um, but then after five years, we know that we would do our 10% multiplier to the power of five and times that by 100. Oh, I just cubed that for some reason. 1.1 to the power of five uh, times 100. I have no idea what I hit, that was so weird. 161 pounds, five pence. So you, you, get, um, you get more from compound interest because as you're growing the amount of money, 10% of that is also growing. Um, so compound interest is what happens in the real world, but you could get simple interest questions. Brilliant. Um, let's have a look. I think um, just a couple more questions. Um, could you explain multipliers? Sure, sure. Um, I'll go through that one more time. Because, yeah, if you take anything away from this, take away the concept of a multiplier and how we use it. Because you'll notice in every single question, the compound interest ones, combining percentages, reverse percentages, calculating percentages, I've been using multipliers. Um, you're not always taught these, but I cannot recommend it strongly enough because it reduces every question to pretty much just like a line. Um, so what a multiplier is, is first of all, it's just dividing it by 100. So let's just look at some straight multipliers. So let's have a look at the multiplier for 32%. That's 0.32. Let's have a look at the multiplier for 98%. That's 0.98. What about uh, 3%? That's 0.03. What about 47.259%? That's 0.47259. So this is just how we're cr uh, creating the straight multipliers. It's just dividing by 100. So basically, there's 0 point the thing. Um, then what we have, uh, so that's how we would calculate something like 32% um, of 500 is that you use the 32% multiplier. That's how we work out the percentage of something. Now when we have um, an increase, let's say it's like this, let's say it's 32% um, increase To 500. So we have 500 um, and we're increasing it by 32%. What we could do uh, is work out 32% and add it to 500. But it's a lot nicer if we can just do it in one multiplication. So that's why we add the one, because you're adding one lot of the 500 as well when you do it. So our multiplier for an increase is our multiplier added to one. So 1 1.32 times 500. And then a decrease is just the opposite way. We're taking it away from it. So we have our one and we're taking our 32% away. 
So that means that if we had a 32% decrease to 500, well, what's one minus 0.32? So going the other direction, it's 0.68. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense um, as to what uh, multipliers are and how we use them. Brilliant. Um, and just wrap up with a couple of last questions. Um, Molly, do you know roughly on, a, on an exam paper how many compound questions there would be? Um, I guess probably just one, but it could be a long question. It could be, it's quite a difficult one to answer because it depends on the exam board and the paper. But probably just like the one question, but it might be a few marks if it's one like that. I really don't know, basically. <laughs> Sorry. No, no problem. I guess it probably varies paper to paper. Um, and just a couple of questions about the online school. Will the online lessons continue throughout the Easter holidays? And we're just working on the timetable for the next couple of weeks. So what I'll do is I'll give you an update um, on that tomorrow in the math session and also tomorrow in any other sessions that you guys might attend. Um, if you're also going um, uh, taking part in the science and English one. So just watch this space for that. Um, and um, I think we'll, we'll wrap up there actually. Um, thank you so much for everyone's um, engagement today. Lots of great questions. It's so nice to see lots of you joining us for, for each of these math sessions um, and lots of new people as well today. So that's brilliant. Um, and Molly, thank you so much for a great session. Um, and tomorrow's math session is portion part one. Um, so hopefully see lots of you for that to sort of wrap up the week um, because as it's a bank holiday on Friday we don't have any um, tutorials then so have a nice afternoon everyone um, and see you in another session very soon. Bye. Thank you everybody. Bye.